Have you been blessed? Thank you, Nehemiah. I'd like to ask at this time if Pastor Stenbachen would come forward. <laughs> May come out of character a little bit. Isn't that, a, isn't that quite a hat? <laughs> I mean, I bought this right off of a guy. I mean, this, and this, I, I make almost all my own costuming. But this I saw, and uh, it was at the general conference session, and there was a guy that was from uh, Tajikistan. And I saw him coming down the hallway, and I said, where can I, and he was wearing this. And I said, where can I get something like that? And he said, well, I'm going to sell this at the, after the Parade of Nations, which was on Saturday night. And I said, how much do you want for it? And he told me, and I said, I'll buy it. And he said, well, somebody else has already asked me about it. I said, I'm not asking. I'm buying. Here's half of it cash right now. <laughs> and I said, when you're through with it Saturday night, you bring it to my booth where I have my, he said, oh, yeah, I know where you are. I was a little hard to miss. I was dressed in Roman armor. <laughs> I was the only guy there in a short skirt. Uh, so I, I bought this literally right off the guy's back. I mean, it's, look at the back. It's beautiful. That is beautiful. I mean, I, I, I said, I, I do pretty well with sewing, but uh, this, no. And then my head is not exactly small. I have a fairly good size. And I thought, well, how in the world am I going to, you know, but I'll figure out a way. And when I got it from him, I put it on. It fit perfectly. So I, this is, this is about the only one that I, I, that I used that I didn't make. But I thought you might, and I'll come out of costume too here so that you can, wow. it, you know, it, it's not too hard to shave. <laughs> People say, is, is that your beard? And I say, yes, I've got the receipt. <laughs> How long have you been doing this, doing the, um, this type of ministry and doing it this way? And what led you to do that? And by the way, be putting some of those cards, and Jonathan, if you will, as they come in, we'll be glad to have them and take them. Uh, and if you would, too, uh, before I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, would you bring Mrs. Stenbach and up, too, and yes, this introduce is, her for us? And, uh, this is yes, thank artist, you. my bride. Uh, this is my first wife. Uh, we've been together for a little over 50 years now, and uh, we've, we've enjoyed being together. Artis served as director of women's ministries at the General Conference for about 10 years, I think it was a little more, and she was associate before that. So it was rather interesting in, in the World Church headquarters that we had uh, two people married to each other who were department leaders of very different departments. And it was interesting because sometimes she would go traveling one way and I would go, one, what was that one trip, it was how many months? Or, no, it, was, it wasn't that months, it was weeks. Six. About six weeks. Uh, she left and then I left and she came home, then she left and I came home and, you know. When we went, when we went to sell the house, people asked us, well, when did you change the rug? And we said we have you a chance to step in and defend yourself so you can hold the mic. <laughs> and, and, uh, they said, how long have you owned the house? We said, 15 years. They said, when did you repaint? Well, we haven't. We only were there, like, uh, what would you say? We were gone at least a third of the time. I traveled about 120 days a year. Yeah. And that was essentially all internationally. In fact, she, her, her passport had to have two extra signatures. It looks like a uh, paperback book. Uh, she traveled actually more than I did overseas. But anyway, uh, the question, I got started with this back in, what, about the late 70s, I guess it was, uh, out of desperation, uh, because I was, given an, uh, I was given an assignment by a full colonel chaplain. I was active duty, and I was a captain, and he said, you're in charge. He didn't say, you know, <laughs> he didn't, he just said, you were in charge of the uh, activity for the chaplains and chaplains' assistants for Christmas, for the Christmas party. And I'm saying to myself, oh, this is, this is easy, piece of cake. Uh, we'll sing some Christmas carols and we'll read some Christmas poetry and, you know, the, well, that's fine. And so I said, yes, sir, it'll be an honor. And I'm headed out the door, had my hand on the knob. And he said, oh, one more thing. Yes, sir. I don't want a bunch of Christmas carols and a bunch of... 
He said, we do that every year. And so as a captain says to a colonel, yes, sir, what, what did you have in mind? Then he said, I want something that has to do with the nativity that is spiritual and is entertaining. Yeah, that's what I said, too. Wow. <laughs> I said that in my head. And, but to him, I said, oh, yes, sir, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of that. And I went out, and artists can remember uh, my prayer life went up. And so I found a first-person story by a Presbyterian pastor, and it's a first-person sermon about Jesse of Bethlehem, who is telling Luke the story of the Nativity. And so I thought, that's it. I'll do a dramatic reading. And so then I, it's, it's called Mission Creep. And I said, well, why don't I just dress up? I'll steal her caftan and put her... I've never gotten it back. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's mine now. <laughs> and she looks at it and says, it's getting a little ratty. And I said, no, that's character. It has character. Anyway, so... I, 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 and then I got a, a beard that you hang over your ears. And uh, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll do the dramatic reading dressed up. And then I said, well, why don't Mission Creep, I'll outline it and I'll give it as though I am the character. And so I did. And after that Saturday night program, uh, a friend of ours, Chuck Savely, Lutheran pastor, chaplain, came up and he said, you've got to come and do that at both my services tomorrow morning. <laughs> I said, Chuck, no, no, this, this was not worship. He said, no, 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 no. He's a major, I'm a captain, okay? And so he said, no. He said, I experienced Bethlehem tonight. You've got to come and do that. And I'd never heard of this being done. I'd never seen it done. But I said, okay, fine. And I expected, how many of you been in the military? Okay, then you, you can understand. What do basic trainees do all day? They run. And when they, when they come in and it's quiet and it's warm, <laughs> So I said, I'm not going to do anybody any spiritual damage. Uh, and so at 9 o'clock, I, I came out and I did Jesse of Bethlehem. And there were about 200 basic trainees. And they're like this. <laughs> and they wanted their picture taken with Jesse. And they wanted Jesse to autograph their, their church bulletin. And I, I thought, and I thought literally, <laughs> they must have had pretty heavy coffee this morning in the mess hall. So we'll see what happens at 11. 11 o'clock, same thing, same program, 200 more come in. And by the end of that second service, I'm saying, okay, Lord, I think you're trying to tell me something. And so from that point on, I've started to develop more and more and actually have done more now since I re retired. Many more. Yeah, you didn't do it much while you were on active duty. Did some while you were at the General Conference. You built the Roman armor while you were at the General Conference. But so to this point, I've done about 70 different characters. <clears throat> and uh, many of them more, some, some have only been one or two times, and others have been more consistent. Let's try this from a different direction. <clears throat> Questions that have come in. Um, two of them, one a little more generic and one very specific. Mrs. Stenbachen, in charge of women's ministries for 10 years. What does that mean? What is women's ministry? That's the generic and the more specific somebody knows something about one of the things you do with the annual books. And so how are select selections submitted and chosen for the annual women's ministries devotional book? I am glad you asked that. <laughs> yes, I do edit the women's ministries devotional book. I started editing it while I was director of women's ministries and asked if I could keep doing it after I retired, that this is my ministry. And I am starting to work on the book for 2015. The 2013 book is at your ABC, so be sure to get it. As to how you can submit or write for it, there are guidelines on the General Conference Women's Ministries website. You can go there under resources, and it has devotional book, and it has, tells you exactly how to do it. And I'm looking always for more submissions. I can use many, many more. So many women say, oh, I don't have anything. Yes, you do. If you're here, if you're alive, God has been with you. And just write it down the way you would tell somebody. 
and I'll edit it. You don't have to worry about that. I get submissions from third world countries that sometimes I even have to read it to Dick and say, what do you think they're trying to say? <laughs> and if I can figure it out, I rewrite it. So don't worry about that, just submit it. If you don't have computer or whatever, get somebody else to do it, talk to um, Debbie Rapp here in your conference. She will have guidelines for it. I know Debbie, she's a great gal, and um, yeah. Now, what does Women's Ministries do? Well, Women's Ministries is really to empower and nurture women in their walk with Jesus Christ to become all that they can be. I know the Army had that slogan, but uh, it works <laughs> for women too. Um, many, many years ago, back in 1889, actually, women's ministry started in our church, a lady named Sarepta Marinda Irish Henry. And um, she was with the Women's Christian Temperance Union and became a Seventh-day Adventist and then started traveling around the country and she wrote to Ellen White saying, I am so disturbed that I see our women just sitting in the pews doing nothing. I have a vision to begin a women's ministry. And she did. Unfortunately, just a couple years later, she died of pneumonia. And women's ministries kind of died with her. She had not had time to mentor anyone to follow her. And so when women's ministries began again in the 1990s um, and became a full church department in 1995, there were several areas particularly where women have focused. We have looked at literacy and education. For instance, all of the profits from the devotional books go to scholarships. I do not get any of the royalties. Those who write for it do not get any of the uh, royalties. It all goes to scholarships. And I believe the number that has been given now is somewhere around 2,000. Um, so literacy, training women is one of the areas. Abuse prevention is another. The name of the program that we have once a year in the churches has been changed now to End It Now. And you may have heard of the End It Now program, ending abuse against anyone, really. Um, another area is women's workload. Uh, poverty. For instance, 70% of the world's desperately poor are women. Most of the world's refugees are women. And, and it goes on and on like that. Another area is women's health issues. And so there are a number of, of areas that we focused on as opportunities for ministry to show women that they could trust God mm -hmm. and that they can be involved in helping others to know about God as well. Thank you. <clears throat> Pastor Stenbach, and you told us that you do, you have 70 different, did you say somewhere in that range, 70 yes. different? Yes, <clears throat> that's correct. Which leads to an interesting question. <clears throat> of coming here in our uh, Can I Really Trust God series, why were these three picked and how does that fit into the discussion? Well, when I was contacted by Dwayne Butcher, <coughs> excuse me, uh, whom I met in Vietnam, Ralph was there, we knew Dwayne, and uh, told me what the series was going to be and, and we talked about various characters we kind of negotiated and talked about and, and came up with Judas because he was a person who did not trust God. I mean, he was, Judas was so full of himself, he didn't have room for Christ. And so if we're going to trust God, we have to make room for his son in our life. And so Judas, in a sense, he's the negative. You know, if you look at uh, like Ansel Adams, black and white pictures, what makes those really striking is the contrast. And so Judas was a contrast character. I mean, I could see when I'm doing him, people sitting out there just saying, you dummy, don't you get it? And he didn't, because he was full of himself. <clears throat> so that was, that was one reason to use him. And then, of course, uh, this morning, Jonah, uh, he didn't get it, and then he did get it. So he had a shift. And Nehemiah, uh, he, he trusted God implicitly from the very beginning. He never wavered. And so those three, 
And yet all three of them were loved by God. And Judas himself, if he would have made room, could have done it. But he was so full of himself, he pushed everything away. And so there's, you know, that's that contrast. So that's the reason. Another question we have. Do you also go to non-Adventist schools, churches, etc.? Oh, yeah. Uh, and do you also do non-biblical characters? Uh, take the last one first. I do very few non-biblical characters. I've got maybe one or two is all, really, that I do. Uh, one recently, the story of the Dorchester, the sinking of the Dorchester with the four chaplains that went down. Um, but almost all the rest of them are, are biblical characters.